Today, we are reviewing Healthy Heart Hospital, a hospital simulation management game. Now, this is not the deepest hospital simulation management game, but it has some very nice aspects to it. This is another in the line of Victory Point games, unusual games that they've selected, but I like that they're going in this sort of direction of picking out games that are strategy games that have different themes than war and political intrigue, which is, as far as I understand, was their bag for a very long time until now. So I really like this, and I've already spoiled my opinion of this game, but let me show you what the game is like and see how you think of it. I'll cover my thoughts in more complete detail at the end of this review. In the game, you will be attempting to get as much prestige as possible without going broke. Above is your prestige track, below is your money track. At the beginning of each round of the game, Ambulance cards will bring us new patients into the waiting room slash triage area where they wait for us to deal with them. Patients in severe condition can be moved to the infirmary wards. Each ward is geared to a specific type of patient, each represented by a color. Yellow represents infectious diseases, gray represents psychiatric issues, green represents internal medicine, Red represents cardiology, and blue represents trauma. You will expand your hospital with various rooms, from operating rooms to increase the ability to stabilize patients in severe condition, to clinics that will heal them automatically, to emergency rooms to hold really bad cases until you can stabilize them for an operating room, and other rooms that provide other benefits to running the hospital. You start with a team of doctors, each with their own special abilities and special areas of healing. Some of them, anyways. But what would any hospital be without an administrator? You'll receive one out of a selection of administrators with special powers that can save the day in ways that even doctors can't pull off. Let's not forget the other staff that a hospital needs. Nurses, finance experts, lawyers, HR and PR managers. They can be, and often are, vital to winning the game. Doctors can gain new abilities, bonuses, and awards through research or training actions. We begin the game with five randomly selected patients in the infirmary wards. Um, as you can see, the trauma center is kind of dangerously full at this point. We, uh, we may want to do something about that. We have the hiring line set up. Each person on the hiring line will be revealed and can be hired when we pass certain prestige points. So for instance, one point of prestige means we can reveal and hire this person at least three points, at least six, ten, 15, 21, etc. We start with $5. We start with two training tokens in the training pool. We start with a random ward ability for each infirmary ward. Each doctor has two medical actions, and the administrator, of course, has an administrative action and a special chief of staff token that they can use to activate one of their special abilities. We've got our um, cube cup and we've got our cube discard. This I will use to show what happens when we draw cubes out of that cup. The first thing you do in any round is to draw two ambulance cards, which we've already done, one on either side. We draw cubes on each side according to the ambulance card. So this could say draw four cubes or less or more. There's draw sevens in there. So what happens when we draw the cubes is that we are creating the initial cube patients to enter the waiting room. Each chair represents a place for a cube patient to go. Cube patients are constructed of cubes. We put matching colors of cubes on the appropriate side of the chair that they were drawn on. And however many cubes are on a patient represents the severity 
of whatever they came in with. So as you can see, we've got some pretty mild cases here. None of them are severe enough to move to the infirmary ward. So we've got a bit of a breather there. Sometimes patients come in and they're pretty ill, or sometimes they may even be dead on arrival. We'll cover what happens when patients die later. So let's take a look at our next step of the ambulance phase, which is making the rounds. Here, these, each of these tokens are patients too. They are just bed tokens. So when we make the rounds, we draw a cube for each bed. If that cube matches their color, they get worse. So that didn't match, so we discard it. This didn't match. Okay, so we drew a black cube. That means we draw two more, and if I, any of those match, the patient gets worse. So fortunately for that one, the patient did not get worse. This patient did not get worse, but this patient does get worse. Like cube patients, we have one through four for the bed patients. So this person is pretty close to death at this point. You'll notice that the discard is going to build up during the round. Controlling which cubes get discarded and which cubes get placed back into the cube cup is an important probability management skill that you need to get a hang of in this hospital, and you'll see why in a moment. Now we go to the player action phase. There are several actions that can be taken. Some actions require medical tokens. Some actions require administrative tokens. To heal a patient, you need to have a medical action token. These two are Dr. Chang's action tokens. These two are Dr. Nowitz, Dr. Cold, and Dr. Bunsen. And these are Administrator Daring's personal tokens. So you need a medical token to heal a patient. Healing a patient basically means to get their level of illness down by one or more levels. For a medical or an administrative token, you can transfer a patient. Transferring a patient means moving them from one area of the board to another area of the board, sometimes to an expansion card, like an operating room or something like that. Another action you can do and this action is only available if you have the Research Lab expansion card built, basically to either pull tokens into the training pool or to assign a token to a doctor of your choice. You usually need to have an administrative token to do this. Administrative actions include building an expansion room, such as the Research Lab or the operating rooms or the break room or any of the other rooms, hiring staff, which if we had staff available here, we, would, we could hire them for $5 each. Some staff must go to the parking lot area first, and then you can use an administrative action to reassign them somewhere else. With an administrative token, you can also train a doctor, which just means paying $5 to assign a training token to a doctor. The player action phase lasts until all player tokens are used, that is turned over to their inactive side. Many doctors have particular training in specific areas. So for instance, Dr. Nowitz specializes in psychiatric care. They get a bonus to their cube draw to heal a patient. Healing a patient requires drawing cubes from the cube cup, and for every color match, you heal the patient by one level. But if you get black cubes, they either make the patient worse or they cancel out one of the color cubes that you drew. So drawing more cubes is generally good, not always, but generally so. Mostly you get money from healing patients. You also get prestige from completely healing a patient. So one thing I'll note about the trauma center ward is that we've got a severity for patient here. So we might make them better if we treat them, but we could also make them worse and kill them. So there's a bit of a balance here, sort of like do I risk trying to make the patient better before I've built the trauma operation room? Because operating rooms, uh, which are other expansion rooms, allow you to better treat and better stabilize patients. So patients in the waiting room slash triage are the most unstable, which, you know, you would obviously figure from the theme, right? Patients in the infirmary wards are a little more stable. 
They don't automatically get worse. These guys can get really bad on bad draws on the ambulance round. In operating rooms, you have a lot more chances for the patient to stabilize than you do in the infirmary ward. So let's go with Dr. Nowitz since this patient is pretty mild, so we have a good chance of healing them and getting a little prestige so we can possibly hire a person. Next round, we are in the infirmary ward, so we draw six cubes. He has a special ability where he draws plus two cubes for psychiatric care. So as you can see from the cup, we've got two gray cubes and we've got one black cube. So the black cube cancels out one of the gray cubes and the other color cubes have no effect. So now we get to heal this patient by one. So we just turn it over. Now, the amount of money or prestige you get is multiplied by the PV or the patient value, which is next to this heart here. So in the waiting room slash triage room, patients are only worth one PV because it's like, you know, oh, they're either mild so you don't get as much money for healing them or, you know, it's like it's the triage room. So what if they died? Kind of. So you don't lose that much prestige when they die in the waiting room. It's a risk management game, right? So in the wards, they're worth two. So because I healed this patient one level, I get two times one, which is two dollars. And once I heal the patient completely, which I hope to do, we will get to prestige. One thing to note is that to further control the probabilities, any doctors that have any bonuses can return that number of bonus cubes back to the cup. So Dr. Nowitz draws two extra cubes, so he can choose two cubes from the drawn cubes to return back to the cup for next drawing. So you can see how we can manipulate some of the probabilities to make them better, especially as the round wears on and we have fewer and fewer cubes in the cup to pull. So we are not going to return the black cube, but we are going to return the two gray cubes to the cup. And we discard these other guys. Every single action is now spent. Dump that into the discard. We refresh all the actions and we take the discarded cubes and pour them back into the cube cup. Now we check to see our prestige level. Our prestige level is at four. So that means we can turn over and reveal these two staff because they're attracted to our hospital now that it sucks a little less. So we turn these over. So our next round begins. Draw seven cubes. We may see our first example of patient death. Yes, we definitely will have a dead patient. That patient's dead because they're five cubes long and they're not in the emergency room, which actually has room for five cubes. This person's also five cubes long. So let me show you how we deal with uh, patient death. So this guy is dead, so we need to settle their death. So deaths, as things get worse, cost more money to settle and they cost you prestige points as well. Now money for settlements increases the more bad cases you get, but prestige losses don't increase. However, how much money you lose and how much prestige you lose is determined by the patient value. Higher the patient value, the more risky it is to let them die. So the five Q patient died in the waiting room, so that's only one patient value. So that's one times one dollar for the first death, so we only lose a dollar. And we mark that death with a tombstone and we lose a dollar. So we're at 19. And we lose one prestige for the single patient value. Now we've also lost this other patient and this time the value of their settlement goes up to three dollars times one for the patient value. We cover this up and now we lose one, two, three dollars and we lose one for the patient value.
When you lose prestige points, you don't unreveal people on the job line. You keep them revealed. Okay, but first, we're going to spend some money. So what we are going to do is use Dr. Daring to build a room. We spend $10 for that room. Some doctors allow a discount on specific rooms if they build it. And how a doctor builds a room is usually through using the shared administrative token that is given by the break room. So we build the break room here. And that gives us a shared administrative token. So shared administrative token goes here. And now this can be used to build a room, specifically the trauma operating room for another $10. So we've got $0 left. So now we've got a trauma room. The operating rooms are great because they let you draw eight cubes and the patient value is three and sometimes that's not so great, but you can see that there's a tiny two and a star, so that's two victory points. I think that's two victory points. Two victory points for building that room. So we do get some prestige, excuse me, prestige points out of that. So what we are going to use is we are going to use Dr. Cold's second token to transfer this patient here. And yes, you can actually transfer directly from the waiting room to the operating room. Patients, when they're here, become EKG patients. One, two, three, four. So this guy is on critical. So we are going to flatline this patient. They're not dead yet, but if we ignore them for another round, they will be because flatline patients automatically get worse. So another thing to note, before we end this game, is that rooms can be upgraded for another $10 each. And when you upgrade them, you get more prestige points and you get other abilities. When you upgrade one of these operating rooms, you get another space for the patient to go down to before they die. And that's pretty much the game. Okay, so you know that I like Healthy Heart Hospital. But did you know that I heart Healthy Heart Hospital? I love the risk management puzzle that it offers. And I love and hate the cube cup, how could you not? But I think it's a great example of where cube drawing definitely wins out over dice. With dice, you can't really modify the probabilities outside of creating external tables and keeping modifier tokens around or making notes of modifiers. But in this game, you can constantly increase and decrease the probability of drawing cubes in very nuanced ways. For instance, say that you've got, for whatever reason, a bunch of beds in the hospital wards. That carries a sort of operating cost, which is very thematic because a lot of cubes are going to be drawn to determine how those patients do in the making the rounds phase. And that's very thematic. As cubes get drawn out, your probabilities get better or worse for certain things. Those black cubes, those black cubes are evil, man. Let's talk about the theme. The theme is all over this game. I love games where you can make thematic decisions and they're actually usually strategically, tactically good decisions. For instance, patients will get worse in the waiting room. They just will. And if you leave them there, they could die. And that's, that's fairly thematic. I mean, what, op what facilities does a waiting slash triage room really have for the seriously ill? They're more stabilized in an infirmary ward, but only for a limited amount of time. Better off than the waiting room, but so moving them to the infirmaries is a good idea. It's even better to move them to operating rooms or the clinic or the emergency room because rooms of that nature have better facilities, so, you know, increased cupel. But at the same time, you have to be careful 
because patients dying in the waiting slash triage room, that is more understandable than the patient dying in the really souped up trauma operating room. And you will gain and lose prestige and money accordingly. All that said, there's one part of the theme, and there's only one part of the theme that doesn't work for me, which is the hiding bodies part, especially that part of the game that is associated with Dr. Lucky and the morgue, where you're hiding bodies so that it's cheaper to deal with settlement costs for money. I don't like that because I am at heart a lawful good person. The idea of hiding bodies is kind of like, it seems to go against the moral grain for me. So I have been challenging myself to try to win these games without hiding bodies and without Dr. Lucky or the morgue. It's very, very difficult. It makes a difficult puzzle even more difficult. You can make uh, the game easier by drawing less cubes when those, emerge when those ambulance cards come up. You can make the game harder just by drawing more cubes when the ambulance cards comes up, come up. Uh, it's a very easy difficulty moderator that way. I love the retro style art of the doctors and the administrators. I love that they have very varied looks. They look really different from one another. That's great. They're not like all copies or, you know, you kind of, sometimes you have these games and you look at the different people and they're like, huh, is this a future where everybody is a clone? Because like, that's what it looks like. That, you don't have that problem here at all. It's great. It really adds personality to each of the doctors in a way that it would be lacking if they didn't have such great art. I like the art on the rooms. I know that some people might say that the ambulance cards would be lacking in the art department, but the truth is that the ambulance cards, the most important part about them is that they are very distinct from one another. Like every card needs to be as unique as possible because during the game, after you've drawn the ambulance cards, you need to be able to mentally say, okay, I've processed those cards so that before you draw the new ones, you aren't caught up in, did I already draw a card to cover this other place or not? Because the cards are face up on these discard piles. So what are you going to do? You want the cards to be distinct from one another without having to get totally different art for each card. Because to be honest, our eyes are drawn to art. And if there was art, the same art on the cards, it would be harder to tell if they were different. So having the very, very different title text actually works better from a design and usability point of view. This game as a whole works really well. There were some questions I had um, that I asked on Board Game Geek, and I got a lot of quick, immediate answers from the designers. That's something I love about Victory Point games. They're, the designers and the publisher and the developers are all very helpful and active on Board Game Geek. You can't say that for all game publishers. So, in the end, I highly recommend this game. And if you are into medically themed games, if you like Pandemic or you like Infection and you want a different kind of risk management game, I highly recommend Healthy Heart Hospital. Thank you.